So it goes without saying that any athlete who makes it to the Olympics is in tremendous shape, but it certainly does take more than physical fitness to make it to the top. So here to talk more about a unique technique that helped one Olympian is Sarah Trowbridge, who is a rower who competed in London, and Leah Lagos, a clinical and sports psychologist. Good to have the two of you on. This is a really interesting subject, I think. Uh, Sarah, let's start with you. Tell us about London. How was it? What was the experience like? Amazing. Yeah. And needless to say, it is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity um, because each Olympics is pretty unique. So going to London was very, very special, uh, especially to have my friends and family there because this is the first time they got to come to an international regatta. Sure. Uh, and when those fans all fill in... Um, cheering your for your country my goodness it's a feeling unlike anything else how did you get into rowing um i actually started as a senior in high school and i just tried it because it had a team atmosphere but still had a lot of individual um skill involved so i liked the um that I needed to have a lot of skill. It was very challenging, but there's a whole group of people working with you. You're the crew coach at Yale. Yes, right? now I'm a crew coach at Yale. What's that like? Um, with the women's team. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, it's great. It's yeah. a group, great group of kids. They're so academically driven, and that carries over to the water. So let's talk about mental training, because Leah helped you. A lot of it is physical, but boy, your mind really has to be in it, Leah. What are some of the techniques that you teach athletes? One of the primary techniques that I use is biofeedback, and it's a way to actually control how your heart responds during those stressful moments where otherwise you might panic or feel anxious, and that affects every type of athlete, from people who are in high school to people like Sarah who are professional elite athletes competing at the Olympics. So talk about the biofeedback. Feedback. Is that where you, you put the sensors on the person's face or their body? Well, it's not quite that invasive. Okay. So we put a sensor around their waist for respiration and a sensor here on the thumb for heart rate. And what we monitor is heart rate variability to help them actually gain control over how their heart rate responds during stress. And it takes about 10 weeks, meeting with me once a week for 10 weeks, and practicing some breathing on your own. Sarah did it for a good amount of time to be up and really ready for the Olympics so that by the time she was at the starting line for the Olympics, she could control how her heart responded under pressure. So describe how you use the technique. There you are, you're in the boat, and I imagine you're nervous and excited and all of those feelings. What are you doing? Well, you can have a lot of anxiety and nerves, and there's definitely a helpful element to that, and it's not letting it overwhelm you, and a lot of it is physical as well as mental, and so using the biofeedback I gained a lot of control over that line, letting the nerves not overwhelm me, the anxiety, um, and putting my body as well as my mind in an optimal position. So right before the race, um, I would use the breathing to kind of control my heart, get my body um, ready to go, to ready to go to that red line without getting overwhelmed, and I would breathe even right before the starting gun went off, um, and that put my body in an optimal position. And then I, I could go down the course and tear sure. it up. Are, are you thinking about something? Are you trying to put yourself in kind of a nice, calm place? Uh, tell, tell me kind of how it all works. Absolutely. So along with the biofeedback, and Sarah, maybe you want to talk about what you feel comfortable talking about in terms of the things that accompany that, that helps you at the race along with the breathing. So I would um, definitely think certain thoughts to help my, in my heart get into the right place and um, so I personally thought a lot about what it was like when I first started competing and when you have no fear and there's no expectations it's just pure love of the sport and so it's channeling that what I called little Sarah mm -hmm. um, when I was younger and also envisioning what I wanted to feel what I wanted that race to look like um, and I used those thoughts and basically I made my thoughts more powerful uh, by using the biofeedback which was getting my breathing and my thoughts in line. So I definitely um, would think a lot about that, and and I noticed these huge improvements mm. in being able to now actually make that happen. Do you need to try to stay in that zone while you're competing? No, I mean, usually instincts take over, take over a lot, and the race is seven minutes, so it is a long time. Yeah. Um, well, not that long, but it does. It feels like a long time. And you have... Um, things that you're trying to execute throughout the race. So you can't, you're not necessarily thinking about your breathing. Um, a lot of this is happening instinctually, but you have basically thoughts that trigger your heart to just be very excited 
and optimal. And so I would concentrate on those things, like how much I loved doing what I was doing, how much my partner and I were working together, and that how we have a, a very good strength. And these actually, if you hook someone up to the heart rate monitors, maximize their heart rate oscillations, which is what we're doing to maximize heart rate variability. And heart rate variability is something that's well known in science to rec present autonomic functioning and autonomic control. We want someone like Sarah to have as much of that as possible. So by adding the the feelings along with the breathing, you're actually maximizing that outcome. Can you use the technique, let's say, if you have to give a speech in front of a group of people? Absolutely. Things like that, or Absolutely. you've got to make a difficult phone call or something So like there's that. all types of performance anxiety. There's yeah. performance anxiety in sports, in relationships, giving presentations, being at a business meeting, and this allows you to... <clears throat> gain control over how you respond under stress in any of those situations. So if people want more information about this and about you and how this all works, where do they go? Sure, www.drleahlagoslagos.com. All right. Yes, Sarah, thanks. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Very interesting. All right. Uh, are you ready for some football? Check it out. Some of the hottest players in today's fantasy football extra right now.